can you change? Okay, I think first of all, I would like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Suti Sak and Professor Zhao for inviting me to attend this seminar. And this morning I will share with you some of my, my uh, lessons I learned from the grouting work for the Taipei MRT construction. And uh, this morning, I, I don't show you too many figures or, or drawings. I will show you uh, a lot of uh, uh, pictures. Okay. So uh, let me see. Uh, can I? Uh, excuse me, I have some problem to, oh, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's always surprises in TBM tunneling. Uh, but the problem is how to minimize the impact of these surprises. Uh, this is just one example here. Uh, the TBM here, for no reason, it, it hits some uh, manhole for the, the sewage pipeline. And some example, uh, the TBM may hit some uh, the uh, edge pile left behind by uh, some previous contractors. And sometimes the water and sandy soil may flush into the receiving chambers of the TBM. And for this example, uh, this is something we don't want to see. You know, this TBM got a, a very wet start. Uh, but so this is all kind of problem can be involved for the TPM tunneling project. So, uh, but actually we have a toolbox in the engineering, at, at engineering's hand, we got a soil grouting method. And we have been using soil grouting method to deal with uh, many expected or unexpected problem. Uh, for example, the, we, we use the soil grouting for the building protection, function and receiving of TPM, and the close passage and water pit construction, and the removal of the un underground obstacles. And for the unexpected problem, for example, just like we saw uh, in the previous slide, uh, we got a leaking problem and we got some uh, problem to fix the broken TPM uh, in, in the place. And sometimes we have to uh, remove the unexpected underground obstacle. But above all, uh, there's one critical question we, we, we must ask. Uh, do we have to send someone out of the TPM to fix the problem? Okay, that it makes a, a big difference for all the uh, soil grouting work. For example, and this is this is a very routine the building protection project, and we have uh, uh, many kind of uh, uh, several kind of protection uh, method, and but but this one probably is uh, is more commonly used, and because it, it involves less. Uh, a grouting area. Uh, for all this kind of routine design, actually, we, we, we have already have very uh, mature design procedure. For example, we have uh, this kind of X, X, uh, Excel file to do the, the for design the, the dimension for this grout, grouting zone. And this is one example, you have the depth, and then we can uh, design the, the, the width and the height of for the this grout uh, grouting work. And the other one is for the the launching and the receiving of the TPM. For example, for the launching of TPM, we do the 
the grouting work, and then we break uh, the, uh, the big hole on the diaphragm wall, and then we can launch our TPM. And for the receiving, we do the same thing, and we grout it and break a big hole, and then we receive the TPM. So for the, the launch and receiving of, uh, of TPM, the, the dimension for the grout zone actually you can calculate uh, by some uh, very routine uh, procedure. But uh, here I show you some stat statistic. Uh, for example, for the TPM launching, and we probably have a, a, width, a width range between 10 to 11. And for the height, it's also uh, 10 to 11. But there's something interesting here for the dense of the, the grout zone. And there's such a big varieties. Um, why there's a, such a big variety? Maybe because of the difference of waterhead and the soil type and the site conditions or the confidence of the contractors. Okay. And uh, similarly, we got the, uh, the dimension design for the TPM receiving, and you can see for the width and height, there's not much uh, variation, but for the, the length here, uh, we, we, we can see there's a, a big variety, and maybe because of the, all these reasons, and sometimes because if you're lazy, you don't want to uh, do too much uh, calculation, you can just uh, put the, maybe uh, the, the length of the TPM plus one to three wings of the RC lining. So for, if you do that properly over here, uh, the, the, the length is ranging between eight to 10 in that, uh, in, over, in that range. Okay, and after you have done that, you have designed the, designed the dimension and then you go, go back and to the drawing board and, and, and do this. It draws circles, okay, many circles. So there's uh, the, the first row of circle, which is in contact with the diaphragm wall. We've got some, uh, you need some uh, spacing for in this, this equation. And the second one, and the third row, okay. And then uh, for each uh, a circle, actually, we got the, uh, this is the spacing between the two jet grout pile. And normally the spacing and the di diameter ratio is, uh, should be less than 0 0.866. And why this number? Because we want to make sure that each grout pile are well overlapped. So after you, you, you draw all the circles and it will be something like this. And we, we, after that, we may have to decide where we want to take the coin and do the water test. Okay, this is very routine design. Uh, for the, uh, this man number 0 0.866, and the, the reason for this number, because if the spacing here is spacing larger than this value, you will got a, a hole which is untreated in between the grow piles. So uh, let, let me use this as example to show you. Uh, here we got the, uh, the grow pile which a diameter of equal to 3.6. And following this uh, principle, we got the, uh, we can determine the overlap between uh, grow piles should be 0 0.5 meters. However, uh, we are not, very sure about the alignment of the, the ground hall. So if if here we consider the uh, the, the drilling deviation is say it's, it's one point uh, one to one hundred and we will get the a spacing which is uh, uh, equal to oh, sorry it's equal to uh, 2.5 meter spacing. So it's a, a in, in other words, sorry, sorry for this, it's 
uh, the overlap is equal to 1.1 meter. That's too conservative. So, so that's the tricky part here. How to design a proper overlap for the jet grow pipes? So, uh, we, we in order to do that and make sure we got the watertight jet grow body, uh, we we need to. Uh, to, to be sure the diameter of the jet grow piles and the drilling alignment for the grub holes. So uh, this, uh, okay, there's several uh, methods can be do it and I will show you the method we use. Uh, traditionally to be sure the, the accuracy of the uh, uh, grub hole drilling, uh, we, we need to mark the, the location of the each uh, uh, grub holes on a deck, this traditional way, but nowadays we can use the GPS. And in the other one is we we need to measure the, the verticality of the drill rod. Okay, but all these traditional methods, we, we only do the measurement on the ground surface, but we are not quite sure what's going on down under. So we, we adopt a, a, a device we call SA8, this uh, device have been used commonly in, in, in for the slope monitoring. So we use the same uh, device to measure the, the drain alignment for the grow holes. So you can see, actually, this is very neat uh, uh, device. However, this one is very expensive. So, uh, so you can see it's a, a string of SA, we, we insert it to the, the uh, the ground hole, we can measure the, the deviation of it. And this is, the, so it, it's very easy to, to carry out. And you just have to pull up or insert it to the uh, ground with this kind of device. Okay. So after that, we got the measurement here. Uh, this is one example, I, I show it here and uh, Actually, the, the growth zone is ranging between 20 to 26 meters below the ground surface. And at the depth of uh, 20 meters, we got uh, uh, the deviation is one to uh, almost one to 200. And this one down in the 20 meter below, we got uh, one to 120. So uh, actually, it's not bad, not bad. Uh, so we got, uh, after that, we can uh, draw our measurement data on uh, AutoCAD and show you in this way. Uh, we, but we are, I will show you the application of this uh, measurement here. Perfect. All grow pile uh, closely overlapped, no gap, no voice. So in this case, uh, it, it is uh, successful. Oh, now you can see the gap here. So uh, in this case, due to the uh, deviation of the drilling, uh, we, we, we may have some gap which left ungrouted in the ground. So uh, this is the, the real case for the, the previous uh, slide I show you. Uh, so we got uh, the surface shot and we got our tunnel. And then this is the cross passage must be drill uh, construct after the completion of the shaft and the tunnel. And all these are the, the chocolate piles. And here, maybe we can take a look. Uh, you, since there's a pipe, uh, some pipelines uh, buried near the, the ground surface. So if we want to drill a hole, we must avoid all these pipelines. So some of the hole must be drill inclined. Uh, 
this is some measurement result for the, the, the drilling. And if the, the drill hole is in vertical direction, perfectly vertical, and I think the, the alignment is okay because the right alignment all fall inside the, the torrents one to 100. But if it's inclined, even the angle is very small, one to three degree. And you can see here, some of the, the drill hole kind of go outside of the torrents. And that's one reason we have some gap inside the grouted body. So something like this, we've got a the gap here. But, but the problem is how to seal it, how to seal the gap. Frankly, it's not an easy job. Okay, so here we've got a gap and how to fill it. And maybe you can do that. Maybe that, but that's only good uh, to, to draw on the paper. It will be very difficult to carry out this kind of like patch uh, uh, fixing uh, in the ground. Uh, so frankly, uh, check grouting must be done right the first time. It only have one shot chance. Fixing, fixing them will be a nightmare if any gaps are left ungrouted in the grouted zone. So uh, we need to do it right, but that's, that's not easy. So, uh, but I have uh, some remark for this type of the, the jet grout mass. Uh, if the purpose of the jet grout mass is to stop the vertical groundwater flow, uh, there's actually it's no need to have a whole length overlap, good overlap between the, the jet grout piles. Okay, something like this. If, if not whole length uh, of good overlap, but it, at least some portion have been overlap, it still can stop the up flowing uh, groundwater. And, but if to stop the horizontal uh, uh, groundwater flow, To stop the horizontal groundwater flow, uh, a pipe actually uh, with the suitable overlapping together with the TM grouting can form a, a better watertight mass for the launching and receiving of TPM. What do I mean by this? This is Chukro piles, and then we we can use it together with TM grouting, uh, for example, uh, here. We, we uh, drill the, the, the sum hole uh, in the overlap area, and we can, okay, I will show it in the following slide. So this is the, the, the case I just show you, and we got the uh, chocolate pile. So we, we, we drill a, a, a hole uh, in between the chocolate pile to check the overlapping condition and later on uh, this hole can be used for the T, uh, TM grouting also to, uh, to give a, a double in insurance for the water uh, titles. So this area will be uh, grouted with by T, TM grouting method and okay and, and since the TM uh, Grouting will be carried out in this area, and this all the, the, the pipe we call the Manchet type will be left in the ground. And in order to uh, to to avoid uh, the, the pipe become an obstacle for the TPM drilling, and sometimes we need to use the we call a segmental pipe uh, for this job. And this type will be easily broken by the cut cutter face of the TPM. And, and for the check routing, and check routing, uh, there's uh, several systems that we call single, double, and the triple system. Uh, the double fully assisted, fully assisted is more uh, popular in Taipei. And one of the reasons is it, it produces this slam. Slam, that means the, the overflow fluid coming from the 
the, the check routing. And this is just to show you the, the, the check. The parking, uh, the real uh, picture of the check routing. Actually, it's very powerful. The jet is very powerful. So it can cut through the soil and form the, the, the check route piles. And nowadays, it's due to the advance of the older machinery, uh, it, it, it is possible to, to do the, the crop up to a diameter of five meters. And this is just some photo actually been dug out from the, the test site. And here you can see in, if, if, uh, in the sandy soil, and we got a larger, we can form a larger diameter than, than in the clay soil. Uh, there's a, uh, for, for the uh, check grouting uh, method, actually there's some we call grouting parameters. Uh, it including the, the deep up rate and the, the check route pressure and flow rate and also the rotation of the nozzle. And all this can be summarized into the, the hand rule up and the jet and the rotation. Uh, normally, uh, these uh, parameters have to be tested from side by side uh, manner because different ground condition we got a different uh, working parameters. And the other one is sometimes it's been overlooked by, by many engineers is the SRAM. SRAM overflowed going out from the, the, uh, the check route uh, area and go all the way up to the ground service. Uh, it is kind of very crucial for the, the practice of check routing. And this uh, show you the, the basic uh, mechanism for the check routing. We've got a jet, high pressure jet here, and we've got the, the, the overflow for slime. And then, but this time it's a mixture of uh, uh, soil and cement. It actually is very troublesome waste to be disposed. And if we uh, we got a crop of the pro hole and no some overflow, and then we got we kind of build up pressure in the ground. So we have a little squeeze, and sometimes we got even get the ground heave. So in order to control the good uh, uh, overflow of the slime, we must const const uh, constantly check the, the specific gravity of the slime, and we, we want to keep it less than uh, 1.6. And one, so this one is 1.58, it's okay. And why, why 1.6? And the, the, the reason is, you see here, and for this case, uh, it's, you can see the overflow is very thick, and the, the specific gravity is equal to 1.78. It obviously is not enough water here. Uh, but for this one and this one, uh, the specific gravity is ranging uh, is around, around 1.6 or even lower. And for this condition, it's the more workable for the, the, the check working practice. So uh, not enough water, and maybe it's have enough water for this, and these are workable. So uh, the, the contractor will come up with some, we call it pre-jet method. Uh, before we carry out our real check working uh, practice, we use the water jet to pre-cut or the, this area. In other words, we add some extra water in the ground and hopefully it will reduce the, the thickness of the slime so it can overflow to the ground more smoothly. And this is the, some uh, calculation I, I did, a very simple calculation. What I just, what I want to say is for a, a three, 0.5 meter of the, uh, the jet rock higher uh, per, per meter long of the the growth higher uh, we need to add 
at least uh, 1.4, maybe 1.5 cubic meter water to achieve uh, specific degree, uh, uh, specific gravity less than 1.6. So all this water uh, must be added during the project process. So uh, the second one is how to determine the, the, the diameter of the Chakra pile. Uh, there are several uh, methods that have been used by different contractors and the method we use is the acoustic method. And acoustic method actually is you, you use the geofoam here, here, and this is the, the jet nozzle here. So if the jet hit the monitoring pipe and we got a geo from here, so we can pick up the sound. And if the jet hit, since the jet is rotating, so if the jet hit the ground pile, it will create a peak of the of the sound grain. So we can analysis the uh, analysis the, uh, the the peak and try to correlate the the jet cutting capacity and, and the peak we pick up from the the geofoam. So this is the for the this is the jet ground pipe pipe is a pipe and monitoring pipe. And this is we call a synchronized microphone lift up device. And this is the, the song plane we pick up from this acoustic monitoring system. And we can see from here, if the, the monitoring pipe is closer to the, the jet nozzle, we, we pick up the, the, uh, the print, the song print, which has larger amplitude compared with this one. This is uh, far away from the, the jet nozzle. So uh, here, if the, uh, this is some example of the, the field test for this acoustic emission, uh, acoustic monitoring method. And if it's uh, the test, the jet ground uh, area is shallow, maybe you have chance to, to dig it out and see it visually, see here, it's monitoring pipe, and you can see the the, the extent of the the, the check protein uh, uh, erosion here. But if, if but if it's uh, uh, the the grout pipe, uh, the the check grout area is, in, is very deep, we cannot dig it out. So we can use this uh, method. We we paint different color on this monitoring pipe, and all these are a mark of the jet cutting. So if the jet cut uh, so this pipe, it will kind of cut away the, the, the paint, and then we know that this pipe has been hit by the jet. So it's a very straightforward method. And so we, we, we can draw, uh, after the test, we can draw the, a table like this, we got sound is correct from the acoustic monitoring system. And, but we need to double check whether or not this sound means something. In other words, uh, we pick up some sound and the cut mark is it's obviously, then we call, call this effective one. But for this one, we pick up some uh, sound, but no mark of cutting on the, on the monitoring pipe and then we, we, we can say this song uh, maybe is not is ineffective uh, for the, it, it's not effective in the cutting. Okay, uh, so in, in the short summary, uh, for the, the soil routing for TPN launching and receiving, and there's two purposes. The one is to provide a sales support of the in situ ground, when a big hole is open up in the on the retaining wall, so in this case uh, we need a strong grout mass to sell support. Uh, so we need the jet grout mass, and the, the second one actually is another uh, purpose for the, the, the soil grouting uh, is to stop the any water leak. Okay, even the launching and receiving of the the TPM. So in, in, for this purpose, it only needs the watertight uh, grout mass. 
but it doesn't have to be very strong. So uh, tube manche grouting, TM grouting can do the job. So let's uh, we call this drawing. We got the this long chain pit to panels here. So we, we can only use a row or maybe two row of the jet grow uh, for the jet grow pile to provide the self support capacity. And the, for the waterproof, we use the TM grouting. Okay. And looking at this, uh, uh, this slide, it, it, we call me the, the Ukraine, uh, Ukraine world. Now it's carry, uh, it's carry on right now. Uh, Jack Rob tires seem to look, it can be, uh, look like the, the tank. And the TM grouting is the infantry. I, you know, uh, I, I, I've been, I serve in the military. I know that these two, tank and infantry, must uh, work together. Otherwise, the tank may become a sitting duck for the Jeopardy uh, missile. OK, so that's we, we, we follow the same principle. We use Jeopardy piles and the TBM grouting together. Uh, in, in another way, this method can be less costly. So the so the uh, so I, I would spend a few minutes to talk about what do I mean by TM grouting. And TM grouting actually is a two manchet grouting method. This is a French word. Uh, it means sleep, sleep of the growth. Okay. So uh, this is the we call manchet pipe. And in Manchuk pipe, uh, we have we drill some holes on the pipe. Normally, it's one, two, three, four in four direction, and then we 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 cover the hole with some rubber membrane. And after that, we seal. Sorry, we we, we seal the the gap between the pipe and the, the hole, and and then we can insert the the, the injection tube here. In the injection tube, and then above and below, we got some invertible packer. So uh, during the the grouting, the grout can go only go out through this port, not up, not down, and not up. So it's some example here. This is the manchet manchet tube. And this in the grouting pipe. So they now they they inflating the the packer. So after the packer inflate, it's very tight. You cannot pull it up. So now now they are doing check. Well, so that it only the the grout can only come up from this port, not this one or not other. One. So this is a very precise con can, a precise control uh, grouting method. Uh, so on top of that, the, the TM method actually can be, uh, can form a we call it geospatial coordinate inside the ground. For example, for, for this, all these uh, uh, manchet pipe, and then we got the plane coordinate, coordination here, on the ground surface, and we know the depth for each uh, injection port. So uh, spatial coordinates can be established. And then we use this machine to, to record the, the pressure response and the flow rate. And then we can come up with uh, uh, we call it the pressure distribution contour, like this. Uh, let me go for a little bit uh, to show it. And that uh, drawing is for this, we call space grouting for underground station construction. So you can see the depth is very deep, up to nearly 50 meters. So we can uh, come up with this kind of pressure uh, contour and then, you can see here, 
we can see this this zone has low pressure response. So, uh, in fact, this is the, uh, the in situ permeability test result. We can see here it's uh, the permeability is higher than than other zone. So the the engineer can make decision whether or not you want to do some regrouting work for this zone or, or maybe not. And here I will spend some time to uh, to say some call unfortunate case. I won't. I will not call it failure case uh, for the soil grouting and the cross passage. I think this is a very strange practice for the tunneling construction. We complete the the tunnel, and then we want to draw a, a, a passage for the evacu evacuation purpose. So uh, we have to take take down the, the RC segment and then drill the hole. And people working in this area has no protection except grouted mass. So this is a very risky practice. So the, for this uh, grouting, it can be done after, after we complete the, the, the tunnel project, okay, from inside the tunnel, or it can be done from the ground service. So this one can be done before the tunneling. And for the water pit, this correct any water leak into the tunnel. Uh, this must be done after. Also, this is the cross passage. It, it, it shows a very small size, uh, the tunnel. So <clears throat> again, we, we must do the uh, uh, routing layout for the this cross passage. And the green one means overlapping, overlapping, and but that's in theory. So, but at least we must make sure it's all profile very nicely overlapped. And this is the case to some example to uh, tunnels, cross passage, and this is the water pit. And uh, we need to, oh, so the, this is the case, it's water pit. Uh, the, we complete the cross passage first and then carry out the, the, the water pit. And this is very bad practice because we expose the whole area for too long, too long. We don't do it this way. You know, it's everyone working in the area which is only protected by grouted mass, it, it's, it's dangerous. Okay, and the water pit is very deep. I don't know why it's so deep. And we can see here, uh, the ground pipes must be drilled from the ground service and even through the underpass here. So we can imagine it, it's very difficult to drill the, the, the ground hole very accurately. And especially some hole must be drilled in the inclined angle. And I will show you before, and this is for the inclined, inclined one to three degrees, it's very easy to deviate from the design alignment. So, but the project actually carry out nicely, we complete the, the cross passage, but it during the process of oh, this water peak construction, see it's almost reached to the, the final depth. We got the water leak and water leak, and then some piping. And at the end, we got the collapse of the, uh, the lining, uh, lining uh, tunnel lining, and then eventually we create a very big hole on the ground surface. And there's another example here, and this one is uh, uh, another launching chamber for TPM, and we need to do the ground improvement here. But unfortunately, there's many uh, uh, pipelines here. So in order to do that, uh, maybe you can have a, a closer look all the, the growth, these growth piles and all the pipelines. So it's, uh, uh, it, it's, it's difficult. So in order to avoid heating any pipelines, we, we may have to pick up all the pipelines and then install, install the, the PVC pipe. And this pipe used as the guide pipe for the, uh, the, the grow hole drilling. Okay, and again, many in crime pipe and many in crime pipe. So 
they before they they launch the the TPM, they found the the, the grouting work is uh, cannot meet the uh, water leak requirement, so they have to regrout the whole area, and it's something I really hate to see. You know, you can see that the area is maybe seven or eight meters without any support, and you drill a hole and do the, the, the grouting, and the grouting pressure may push the wall inside. So this is the, not a very good design. Uh, but, but anyway, they did it, and fortunately, they, they, they succeeded. Uh, so, uh, and there's another case for this, and we got the growth in here, so growth in here, and this is for the launching, and here there's some gravel there, but we are not, we're not sure the, the boundary between uh, the, the gravel there and sandy there, but and, uh, for the gravel there, it's not very good uh, uh, soil for the check routing. So the, this is the practice. They try to break the big hole, and but all, all of a sudden they find this ground loss and water leak, and so they they just water leak. Probably that's the source, and. The, the contractor did, didn't check the overlapping of this row of grow piles. So this is the possible source for the water leak. Uh, so I do it quickly. So when they find the water leak and they have to rush and then they just push the, the, uh, the TPM into the, the wall, try to you know, plug the leak. Okay. But since there's some debris which they did not clean, clean out very clear, uh, clean, uh, clearly, so when they push in the TPM, the TPM kind of moves a little bit upward. So the upward and then the damage we call this butterfly plate. And this butterfly plate usually work together with some uh, rubber membrane. So we got some problem here. So this is a photo here, a lot of leaks. And here, after we put a lot, lot of sandbag, uh, we can uh, control the leak. And then afterward, we, we, we do the, the, the grouting outside. And then eventually, we, we are able to stop the leak. Uh, the sandbag. Uh, sandbag, I would say, it's the friend it's a friend for the geotechnical engineer. And if you encounter any leak, sandbag may be a very useful material to stop the, the, any soil being flushed out from the leak. Okay, and there's maybe the last one, I must brush up. Uh, this is another case, it's a, a big one, uh, for the uh, ground subsidence due to the water leak. Uh, this is the, at least the uh, grout, uh, grouting projects. It's very magnificent grouting project. You can imagine how much money is spent on the grout, grouting. Uh, so that's the case here. And we got a clay here and sand, gravel, and the, the tunnel in tunnel is in, in this depth. So uh, it, it just cover uh, the, the bottom and the top of the sand and gravel there. But this one is clay there. So they, they say we don't need to grout. So I will show you, I will show you later. So here, uh, for this, the green one, we call it full length. But other area, maybe you can see other area, this part in clay, no, no, uh, no grouting. And here, we check here and here. The, uh, this gap without being treated by check grout piles. 
So this is the the accident occur when they 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 already complete the, the tunneling, but they are doing the the process for the flexible joint construction. So to in, in order to do that, we must they must dismantle several uh, uh, lining and install the the flexible joint. But in the process, when they dismantle the 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 lining, they need to enlarge the, the tunnel a little bit by breaker and shock grid. But you know this uh, breaker, uh, all the ground pile has no uh, steel reinforcement, so it's uh, it's brittle, so it's very easy to be broken by by the breaker. So this part, after the the dismantle, remove the dining. This part actually, uh, it's only counting on the the ground pile to to stop any water leak. So after they remove it, they build a, a flexible joint and then we build it. And back we have grow. Then this is planned, but actually it, it never happened. It, it water leak occurred. Uh, so that uh, water leak and then it created a lot of uh, uh, subsidence problem. Uh, so nowadays we, we use different approach. We, if it, the ground condition is no good, we use the the, the TPM shear can be abundant, and then we construct the the night RC lining inside the the shear. So this can be minimize any risk of water leak. So for the okay flexible joint. So flexible joint built here, and this uh, this part actually has when we construct this RC lining manually, we have the protection of TPM shear. So this is the, some picture. I'm going to the end, the tunnel TPM, and this is the uh, we build by manually. Okay, and this a few remark. Uh, the, the thrust and torque from the advancing TPM often cause crack in the waterproof growth zone outside the receiving pit and form some uh, flow paths for groundwater to seep in. Crack. So, uh, so there may be some gap formed between the the, the diagram wall and the ground body uh, due to the different. Uh, a material property between the ground uh, zone and the, the ground, the soil around, so there may be some gap. And some of the uneven uh, surface between the diaphragm wall and the ground may form some flow path, uh, flow path, let me see, something like this. Oh, so this is, uh, uh, this can be a flow path, but, but it's, it's difficult to detect. And such gap and flow path, uh, may be sealed off by soil grouting before a big hole is open on the diaphragm wall for the TPM receiving. Okay. So this is potential flow path. And this is the uh, the typical way of for the flexible joint construction. Can can you see? You know, is it we only let me go back. The core uh, lining has already constructed inside the, the diaphragm wall. And when we, we need to remove this lining and then replace with the flexible joint. So this practice with much uh, safer. So from, from the, the, the extent I just mentioned, we, we preferred to use a straight line instead of curved line for the uh, the, the shaft, the, the pit. So uh, this is the end of my presentation. But I'm not sure it's the, the end of the story. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Liao. Okay. Okay, now the floor is open for questions.
I have a uh, let me ask one first question. I have uh, uh, thank you again, Professor Liao. Uh, it's very impressive uh, slides you have prepared for us. Uh, throughout your slides, you went through the materials about the ground work you did for the MRT line, and then from our audience. There are, there are a lot of new engineers, and they are going to work on the grouting work in MRT projects. So my question is very general. What would be, what would be the, the most difficult or the, the tough challenges you would say for grouting work in the MRT projects? And, okay. and what, what should we do to prevent that kind of difficulty when we design and construct it? Uh, you know, uh, there's contractor with different level of uh, capability. <laughs> yeah. So um, if you need to do the job right, Okay. Don't go for the cheapest one. Okay, that's my <coughs> first comment. And, and the, the second one, even for the the good one, we actually we, we check and double check and triple check. We, we, we never assume the thing can be done right automatically. We check, especially for the, the groundwater. Mm -hmm. so I think in Bangkok, or, or in Taipei, the groundwater is a big issue. Yep. But to stop the groundwater is a big challenge, even for me. You know, we, 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 I'm still in the learning process. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you're, you're, I think you're exactly right. This is what I, I usually tell my students. Uh, as a geotech engineer, we hate water. Uh, without water, I think uh, uh, 80, 90 percent of our problems will mm -hmm. be gone. But uh, but too bad, it's it's really hard to to stop the water. So that's why it's it's very difficult too. 